This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have an older model Bosch that is not draining and we're going to take a look at a couple things see if we can get this working again properly. So I'm going to bail out the water that's in here because when I set it to drain <clears throat> nothing's happening so something isn't right. I'm going to get this out using a pan first and then I might use a turkey baster once I get the lion's share of the water out of there. So the area I'm working in right now is called the sump and this is the area where the filter sits usually. So we've removed the filter already. I want to get all this water out so I can get down a little further. This area to my right where my index finger is, that's actually a different pump. That's a circulation pump. You want to be able to reach in there and feel that that impeller can spin really easily. This is the cover for that circulation pump to prevent big things from being pulled into the pump. And then I'm going to remove using a Torx 20 bit this one screw that's holding the impeller cover in position. And once I get that screw out, <clears throat> I can just pull on this tab and it'll lift the impeller cover off. And then I can feel that the impeller, the little propeller thing can turn pretty easily. It should feel like it can turn easily and then and then there should be like a, a funny magnetic feel to it and then it should turn easily again. And that's normal. That means nothing's wrong. But if it's very hard to turn, that means there's something probably caught underneath it, like a piece of glass. So you can use a screwdriver to just push on the paddle. It should move pretty easy. I'm cleaning out these little gates. There's a seed caught in there. But sometimes underneath this impeller, there's a piece of glass or ceramic that you have to reach in there with maybe needle nose pliers or tweezers to pull it out. And that'll definitely keep your dishwasher from draining because the impeller can't spin. You might hear the motor humming, but no water moves. So what I noticed on this dishwasher is that the motor worked sometimes and other times it would hum. Other times it seemed like it was stuck and then other times it, it would work. It was, so it was intermittent. If I gave the propeller or the impeller a little push, it would start. So that means either that the impeller is partially stuck or the motor is just worn out. Bosch drain motors are great. They last a long time. The customer mentioned this one is 10 years old. I just pushed in on this door lock with my standard head screwdriver to make the dishwasher think that the dish that, that the door is closed and then I'll set it to drain and just watch what happens. Just that way I can kind of see more what's happening. So I'll start it and then I'll press these two buttons at the same time. They're the ones that start the drain cycle. I got to hold it for about three seconds. And then I can see what that impeller is doing. Again, I noticed that it would often hum, but if I gave it a little push with my screwdriver, then it would spin really well. So although it's really rare on this machine, yeah, that just spun really good. It started it. I think the drain motor's actually worn out. So it's pretty easy to, to uh, replace it. And we looked on Amazon and found that uh, the original equipment one was about $110. And they had like a uh, aftermarket one that was about $35. I'd probably go for the 110 original equipment one. And we'll go over here in the video here in a second how you can pretty easily replace it. You don't have to pull the dishwasher out to do it. Yeah, I keep getting that weird result. 
I'm just using a zip tie to reach in underneath the impeller to see if I can push out anything that might be caught below it. But it seems clear, so I don't think there's anything in there, but that's that's worth a try just to see, again, if there's a piece of ceramic from a, a mug that might have broken or a wine glass that got caught in there. I'm using a little tool to reach in around the area where the motor shaft is to see if there might be a some hair or a rubber band or something that got caught around the motor shaft, but it seems clear. So everything's pointing toward just a worn out motor. And at, at 10 years, that could be the case. I've seen a lot of Bosch dishwashers go even like 18 years without the drain motor wearing out. But it could be that something got caught in there and made the motor um, overheat and that wore it out prematurely. The part that wears out really is just the um, copper windings over time if they get too hot because there's an obstruction. The copper degrades and it doesn't create a powerful enough magnetic field and you don't get a you don't get a, enough um, energy to break the inertia to get the motor going, but if you give it a little push, <clears throat> it will work. So again, it usually points toward something blocking the impeller or just a worn out motor. So if you want to check that motor condition or the impeller, you can take off the cover like we did and then use a standard head screwdriver to push in on the door latch and then start a drain cycle like we're doing here and then you can just look in there and see what it's doing. I'm going to just try a trick. I'm going to add a little bit of vegetable oil in there as a lubricant just to see if that does anything. So I'll tell it to drain. And it did spin that time, it did work. I'm gonna see if that lubricant will help it. So we can see it shooting up the water in there. After doing this a few times, I found that it did work and then it stopped working again. So I was just hoping I, can, I could avoid replacing the motor, but it looks like this one's really gonna need a new motor feeling the um, top of the impeller housing it's pretty chewed up so something was in there at some point and it was smacking into the plastic over and over and kind of tearing it up and that would be some that would then point to maybe something that would cause the drain motor to wear out prematurely so I'm going to put the cover back in And the way I'm gonna put it in is I'll push in the uh, bottom of it toward me first, and then I'll push in the back edge of it so it sits nice and flat. Then I'll add that Torx 20 screw back in. And it goes in the hole that's furthest away from me. So then when I tried it again, it, it just was humming, so it did not do the trick. So I'm going to replace this motor I take out these two Phillips head screws that are covering the kick plate that are uh, below the dishwasher. Get the kick plate out of there. I'm going to reach in and grab this insulation and get it out of there. Got to make sure I have it unplugged at this point open the door a little bit that gives me more room to work and I'm gonna lift up on this tube it's, it has a little clip over it this is the, the tube that um, where the water is gonna drain out or actually I'm sorry this is the tube that brings water in into the dishwasher I'm gonna pull that out get it out of the way and I'm gonna reach in and Twist the, twist the motor toward me so it points to about 45 degrees 
and then I can get it out. I gotta take out a couple of Torx 20 screws here on these on this plate because it's not letting me get the motor out. One on the right, one on the left. And that gave me a little more room. Now I can reach in and grab the drain motor, pull it toward me, and then I'll slide it out to my left so I can take a look at it. <clears throat> I had to remove the power connector too from the drain motor by just pulling it straight out. So this is the impeller. This is the thing that spins and it should feel like it moves easily and then, then it has a resistance, then it moves easily and then it has a resistance. I'm going to pry off this um, impeller assembly. Look in here, see if there's anything like food debris or something caught in there. I'm hoping I can save this motor, but it may be a gone or it may just be time to replace it. These are some things you could do if, if you don't have access to a new motor. So I'm going to clean these parts really well. There was a little bit of food debris in there. It has a lot of seals that's supposed to prevent stuff from, like that from getting in there, but still things sneak past. This is the magnetic part, cleaning. And now we're going to put a new motor in. So I'm going to slide it in below that panel, get it in position, and it'll be 45 degrees uh, toward me initially. And I'll push it all the way in to where it seats inside. And then I'll push the motor uh, away from me so that it goes vertical to 12 o'clock position. To get a better look though, what I'll do is I'll remove this uh, front panel from the dishwasher. I'll take out these Torx 20 screws along the perimeter and that's going to allow me to pull the uh, front panel off. You don't have to pull the door off, but you can just pull the front panel off. It'll give you a lot more room to work and this is going to allow me to kind of show you guys how the motor goes on. Once you know how it goes on, you don't really have to take off this door panel. You can just do it like we were doing earlier, but this does make it easier. It just takes a few more minutes to remove these little screws and get the uh, front panel off. There's two here in the corner also we would need to remove. We don't remove the ones in the center though, just the ones here on the corner and the ones down on the edges. Now we can pull the panel off. Get that out of the way. Now you can see a lot better what's going on. So here's that tube that's bringing the water into the dishwasher. This is how you would take the drain motor out, pushing with your thumb here to release it. And then you twist it toward you to about 45 degrees. And then you can pull off the old drain motor. Here's that panel that was kind of in the way. So here's how you put it in. Go in 45 degrees, then turn vertically away from you. So just kind of make sure before you turn it that you really get it pushed in as far as it can go into the sump housing. So just play with it, wiggle it around. There we go. And then turn it and it'll click into position. And you can put this inlet tube back in. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.